We are reminiscing about Here Come the Double Deckers from the early 1970s uh, with Gillian Bush Bailey. Uh, she played Billy, uh, the tomboy of the group. And sometimes, I don't know if you've already heard it in the first part of the interview, that, that, that young Billy comes through. You can hear it in her voice. And as she's just been intimating, she comes from a theatrical family. I've got a wonderful makeup box, which was my grandmother's. It's got her initials in one corner my mum's in another corner, mine in another corner, and then my own daughter's in the fourth corner. So there's that sense in which there is quite a long history of us as a family in the theatre. My father was in the theatre and my brother was also in the theatre. So I came from that background, so I was never really allowed to get too starry, otherwise I'd get sort of whacked, really. But do you think um, you grew up quicker because of the bit? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I always think of it that I had... A really wonderful childhood. I was brought up in Buckinghamshire. I had a, a great, a lovely childhood. But I think my teens, I didn't really have the teenage experience. I didn't have loads of friends and go round in a gang. And when I saw my daughter doing this, I thought, oh, yes, that's what I missed out on because I was working. So I was with adults most of the time. I didn't have a peer group um, of other girls and boys my own age. And in many ways, Double Deckers was that it was a sick we worked together for six months and I got to know some of them really quite well um but others not I mean you just it, it was it's very strange to explain really um and through kind of people's interest in double deckers we have had various moments where we've got back together again Michael Lord Drayson who played Brains Brinsley Ford who of course founded Aswad yeah. the band him um, the three of us have been together at various points and both Bryn and Michael do a little piece on the DVD they've now released Double Deckers on DVD and they do a little interview afterwards and I was quite touched by Bryn saying he used to sort of rather like me kind of go oh Double Deckers no 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 ignore it it was the past but he's now begun to realise how important it was for many young black lads mm. to see a black boy on television and that this was you know there weren't many of them around in the 70s and so he's beginning to be able to kind of reclaim it and celebrate it and I think similarly Billy as a character she did load she was very proactive she wasn't a sort of girly girl who floated around in the corner she was very much a tomboy and got on with things and and so I think in a sense that there was something there to celebrate that I've been able to find again and enjoy looking back on it again. If you were making the double deckers today there would be some sort of blanket around you which said if it's a hit series then you move on to something else we were talking to Mike Holloway from the Tomorrow People and Flintlock mm. and literally that finished there was nothing for Mike Holloway. And mm. was it the same with the Double Deckers? It was almost like you were used and then put to one side. I think that was the case for quite a few of them, actually. I mean, Peter Firth, obviously, who played Scooper, he has gone on and done an enormous amount of work. And I think, um, I mean, Test of the Durbervilles, and then he's been in Spooks recently. That's the thing we see him in most. And I think for Peter, it was a kind of, that was a job, to turn my back on it, go forward. And he did some amazing work. I mean, he was the first um, Alan Strang in Equus and was absolutely fantastic and so I think Double Deckers for him is something he's not particularly wanting to recollect although funnily enough he was going out with a friend of mine and it was his 50th and we got together for his 50th birthday and it was just amazing because it was like being with somebody that I'd been at, at school with we kept going oh do you remember when oh do you remember <laughs> Sam Kidd came in oh yes and, and, and it was lovely um, but I think, I think Peter is somebody who feels, no, that was something I did a long time ago, move forward. Um, Michael did Young Winston afterwards. Brinsley obviously went on and, and founded Aswad. Mm. Debbie, who played Tiger, she went into the music business and has been very successful on radio and, and um, as a singer and a presenter. And Douglas Simmons, who was Donut, he was a nuclear physicist. That's what he went on to be. And, um, in fact, very sadly, I only heard a couple of weeks ago that he had died. So, again, a very early death, because he was younger than me. He must have only just been 50, I would think. It's, it's one of those sit-up moments, though, isn't it? When somebody like yeah. that does pass away, you realise, yeah. hang on a minute, what, what is going on here? That's right. But it was, it was um, Styx, uh, Bruce, the American, he doesn't work anymore as an actor. So I think for some people it was a move on. And they got us all back together because when we first did Double Deckers, the idea was they would make another series. And we all knew, I think that 
if they were going to do it, they'd have to do it really fast because we were going to grow and look rather strange and we weren't all... <laughs> as we kind of grew up and <laughs> went into teens. As puberty um, hits, anything's yes, possible, Yes, yeah, isn't it? puberty hits and it gets a little bit tricky. Um, but we did get together, I think it was a couple of years after, and it was, it was already clear that, that we were not going to look like a gang anymore. But it was a very odd... I think one of the strange things with Double Deckers was it was financed from America... Uh, it was eventually broadcast by the BBC, but it was made in the UK. And in a way, I think the programmers at the time felt it fell between two stools. It wasn't English enough, it wasn't American enough. But the actual audience adored it. They really loved it. But that took a while for the programmers to cotton on to the fact that, that it had been so successful. And I think they didn't pick up on it as quickly as they, they could have done. Because they were supposed to make 26 and you only made 17, wasn't it? Was it something like That's that? That's right. We made 17 in, the first, um, in that first six months. Um, and then after that, I went on and did other work. I did Follyfoot when I was 17. I remember having my 17th birthday out on this freezing cold farm outside Leeds and also I wasn't the most confident rider and I think Yorkshire Telly Steve um, uh, might be able to and Gillian Blake might be able to tell you more about this my sense was that they did a deal whereby they said to the sort of local people I'll tell you what we'll liberate your horses we'll look after them if we can use them for, for filming well of course these were pet ponies they had no idea about stopping on a mark or, or dealing with lights sizzling and microphones, booms kind of swinging around the place. And I what I could ride, but just about. And I hated this wretched horse I had to ride. It was always biting my bum every time. And then there was the moment where I had to ride in, in sh hot pants, which 